friends, welcome to my channel. In our last video, I have talked about what is literary criticism, what is literary theory, how literary theory emerged. Then we had a discussion on four important literary theories, namely uh, new criticism, formalism, structuralism, and post-structuralism. And in this video, I'm going to continue with the same discussion, and we'll be talking about other important literary theories. So let's start. The first important literary theory that we are going to discuss today is postmodernism. Now, as you guys know, postmodernism is concerned with fragmentation and chaos because it is a movement which started after World War and two World Wars have devastated the entire economy of the world. So postmodernism deals with fragmentation. It focuses on how fragmentation is more important and unity is less important. It also focuses and shows interest in disorder, chaos, fragmentation, multiplicity rather than focusing on unity, order, organization. In this entire process of postmodernism, one key figure is Jean Baudrillard. Jean Baudrillard is a person who gave a very, very influential theory in his work Simulacra and Simulation. So he talks about two important things, Simulacra and Hyperreality. According to him, there was a time when only reality existed, like we have rat. Rat as an animal existed since ages, but then Mickey Mouse started to exist in the postmodern society. So who, what is Mickey Mouse? Mickey Mouse is not a real figure. Mickey Mouse, koi actual mouse hai nahi, but then it is just a copy of something just how original nahi hai. So it is a false copy of something. So now if you look at the image of Mickey Mouse, we will see that it is a simulacra. Simulacra is anything which is a false copy, which is original exist nahi karta. All the animated stuff that we see these days, it is all a simulacra. Okay, simulation is the process of replacement of original. So we have simulacra, which is a copy of something which is original nahi hai. Then we have simulation, which is a process of replacing the original. And then that leads to hyperreality. Hyperreality is something which is more real than reality. Like the image of beauty presented in media. Media mein jo commercials aate hai, jo advertisement aate hai, they project such kind of beauty which actually doesn't exist in the real life. The commercials of um, face cream or of deodorant, those commercials portray you images of certain people just type ke log actually hamari society mein exist nahi karte. The, uh, the beauty and the definition of beauty defined in a fair and lovely art, such kind of beautiful people doesn't exist in reality that is more beautiful than beauty. They are creating an idealistic image which is outperforming reality. That is what hyper-reality is all about. So this is what modernism uh, talks about. Other than Jean Rotart, we have other modernist thinkers like we have Julia Kristeva who talks about Cora. Then we have Jean Francis Leotard who talks about the concept of meta-narrative. So you will be studying all these under the audio course. Uh, you can get a list of all the important post-colonial feminist writers as well as post-modern writers on my website www.arpitakarva.com under the tab of online course content you will find a module named literary theory and in that module you will find a list of all the important writers that you must study if you are preparing for UGC net English. Now let's move to another important literary criticism and theory which is psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis basically deals with the exploration of the subconscious mind, the subconscious part of our brain and how the subconscious functions. It explores the uh, inner desires of a character and whenever we are looking in a novel and we are looking at the characters, we see how the character's inner brain function, the internal monologue, that is a part which is de dealt in the uh, psychoanalysis criticism. Uh, the major figure, the key figure in the psychoanalysis criticism was Sigmund Freud. He has written this work, Interpretation of Dreams, in which he has talked about how dreams are important and how we can interpret the inner desires and we can find out the repressed emotion through the symbols which are there in our dreams. We have so many novels in which the characters dream about fox, about wolf, about cat and all these figures are symbolic of certain repressed emotions. When we analyze those symbols, we are able to see the subconscious working of the character. 
so dreams are very important and dreams uh, tell about the repressed emotion about the subconscious desire dreams need to be decoded in order to understand the character thoroughly in the psychoanalysis criticism we also have the theory of oedipus complex and electra complex basically a theory ye kehti hai ki jab ek bachcha chhota hota hai and a boy especially a boy when he is small wo jab apni mama ke sath baithta hai to he feels so attached to uh, his mother that he doesn't want to share his mother with anybody but then father and mother ka ek bond wo apne samne dekhta hai and he gets so jealous that he wants his father to die and he wants to marry his mother but this desire is so morally wrong that the child suppresses these desire and later in his life sometimes uh, it comes as a oedipus complex oedipus complex has been talked about in the play of euripides oedipus rex also at the same time we find that uh, in dh lawrence work sons and lovers the same theory has been taken up Uh, similarly we have electra complex which deals with the working of female uh, daughter uh, in regard to his father uh, daughter wants to marry her father and wants that her mother should not be there in the father's life so this is a kind of uh, mentality which goes in, inside a child's brain this was uh, told by sigmund freud sigmund freud also gives emphasis on the theory of the subconscious brain where he talks about three parts of the brain id ego and super ego according to him id is the part of the brain which is working on the pleasure principle hamare sabke andar ek chhota bachcha hota hai jo आइसक्रीम खाना चाहता है चॉकलेट खाना चाहता है जो वो सारी चीजें करना चाहता है जो एक मॉरली या एक एडल्ट इंसान नहीं करना चाहेगा ओके सो दैट पार्ट ऑफ आस इज इज देन वी हैव द मॉरल प्रिंसिपल विच इज सुपर ईगो सो हम जो भी मॉरली जो राइट right चीजें करते हैं या अगर हमें कोई भी चीज सोसाइटी के अकॉर्डिंग करनी चाहिए जस्ट बिकॉज वी आर अ पार्ट ऑफ सोसाइटी एंड वी शुड फॉलो द नॉर्म्स दैट इज द मॉरल प्रिंसिपल विच इज कॉल्ड सुपर ईगो एंड बिटवीन दिस इड एंड सुपर ईगो इज द ईगो विच बैलेंस इज बोथ द थिंग्स एंड हेल्प्स एस लीड अ बैलेंस लाइफ सो दिस वॉज ऑल्सो प्रोपाउंड कॉन्सेप्ट गिवन बाय सिगमेंट फ्रॉइ Uh, concerning with the psychoanalysis school of criticism we have another uh, type of literary theory which is called archetypal criticism archetypal criticism basically talks about the archetypes which are there in the myths and legends archetypes for those of you who don't know i will tell you that archetypes are universal symbol for example the symbol of star crossed lover is romeo and juliet so whenever we see a very lovely couple we would say oh my god they are like romeo and juliet so what we are doing actually humne ek romantic couple ki image ko substitute kiya hai romeo and juliet se for us romeo and juliet and two people being in love extremely in love are same so universal symbol ban gaya hai romeo and juliet similarly we have so many other universal symbols which are so prominent in literature at the same time there is a very influential work written by fs fraser gs fraser uh, named uh, golden bow golden bow this work talks about symbols and archetypes and it has been asked several times in net so you must read the summary of this work so this is it about psychoanalysis criticism and archetype criticism now let's move to another important literary criticism now let's talk about another literary movement which is feminism feminism as a literary movement talks about the condition of females portrayed in the literature and it also talks about how a female is being represented in a novel or a play or a poem uh, feminism has three waves the first wave was begin by mary wollstonecraft she has written this beautiful work called vindication of the right of women and another important work education for daughters in both these works she focuses on why education is very important for a girl and only through education she can become a companion to her male counterpart okay she would not be a mere wife but an equal companion in a marriage The next important figure in the feminist theory is Margaret Fuller. Margaret Fuller has given the theory of androgyny. According to her, no ma- male is having all the masculine quality and no female is actually having all the feminine quality. Every male has some masculinity and some femininity in him. Similarly, every female has a part of masculinity and a part of femininity in her. So how uh, she talks about these two things tells us that every male has some female elements and every female has some male elements. 
Then we move to the second wave of feminism. In the second wave, we have Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf talks about Judith Shakespeare and says that, you know, uh, if Shakespeare would have had a sister, then would that sister be as famous as Shakespeare is? She talks about this in her work, A Room of One's Own. Also, she has written another work which is called Profession of Women. We have another literary uh, critic uh, concerning with feminism called Simon de Beauvoir. Simon de Beauvoir has given a work called Second Sex, wherein she says that no woman is born as a woman, she becomes one. Those gender roles have been uh, trained and she has been trained with those gender roles and gradually she takes up all the womanness and all the characteristics of a female. When a child is born, that child doesn't know what fe femaleness or what maleness is all about. That is being told to the child gradually and society and society ke implications ki se, that person becomes a male and becomes a suitable female in society. Okay, then we have another important feminist critic named Helen Sixow. Uh, Helen Sixow has talked about Laugh of Medusa. Laugh of Medusa is a very, very important work and in which she's talked about uh, how a female is being tortured and how she has those repressed emotions in her. In the third wave of feminism, we have Kate Millett. Kate Millett has written this work, Sexual Politics, a very important work from Net point of view. In this work, she talks about that every girl is uh, re repressed and has suppressed emotion during her childhood because when she is born and when she is moving around her house, she realizes that she will never become an heir of her father's She will never become an heir of her father's wealth and that feeling of being less uh, makes her a repressed and a suppressed person and she keeps on uh, moving on the same platform. We also have cyber feminism and black feminism as a part of the third wave of feminism. So you must study those topics in detail as well. There are so many important works concerning uh, the feminist theory because uh, feminism is something which has been talked about a lot and it is very important from net point of view as well. So it is important that you read all these important literary uh, essays in detail and even though you're not able to read the text of those essays, at least read the summary before you go for the UGC net examination. Now let's look at another important literary theory which is post-colonialism. Post-colonialism basically deals with the condition of the colonized country and how the people and the natives living in those countries are affected and how their society changed uh, when they were colonized. So in this regard, we have so many different literary theorists who have given their own theories on the post-colonial literature. Some of them we'll be discussing in this video. We have one very important post-colonial theorist uh, called Franz Fanon. Franz Fanon has written this work, White Skin, White Mask, and also has written another important work, Wrench of the Earth. In both these works, he talks about how a native person wants to become English man because the image of man is associated with English or man is associated with white. So any native person who is black wants to become a man. He wants to be a man, a man. But in his mind, this thing is that the person is white. The person is white, the person is not white, the person is not black, the person is not a colonized country, he is not a man. And in order to become a man, he tries to take all those things that are a part of culture of the West countries. Then we have another important uh, literary theorist here named Edward Said. Edward Said has given the theory of Orientalism. Orientalism, according to Edward Said, it means that all the people who are in the West, they have gained the knowledge of the East. They East ko samjha, East ke jo log hai, unka culture usse samjha. And is ki wajay se, unho ne us cheez ko samaj ke East pe dominate karna chalo kar diya. See, when you want to uh, capture somebody, or you want to kill somebody, or you want to torture somebody, aapko zaruri hai ki aapko us insaan ki weakness pata ho. Once you know that person thoroughly, then wo aapke liye bhoat aasaan ho jata hai isko blackmail karna, usko influence karna. The same thing was done by the people from the West. Unho ne East ke culture ko study kiya, aur phir usi knowledge ko use kiya in order to dominate the 
east also he says that western people have tried to depict east as primitive savage ki ye log barbaric hai this is how they have uh, you know portrayed east the third important literary theorist in the post colonial theory is homi ke bhava homi ke bhava has given a very important theory about mimicry and about hybridity in his work uh, of mimicry and men uh, he has talked about that how this entire uh, european culture has dominated the entire world by using the concept of hybridity and mimicry see every person who was colonized wanted to be english men or wanted to be white in uh, his nature and his behavior and his etiquette wo kyu karna chahta tha because kahi na kahi jo humne baat kari franz fanon ke case mein ki use lagta hai ki jab wo ek english man ki tarah deal karega to uski society respect karegi okay and then he will be a full fledged gentleman wo wali image thi but is beech mein jab wo ये करना चाह रहा है कोशिश कर रहा है इंग्लिश कल्चर को अडॉप्ट करने की इस बीच में वो देखता है कि वो एक हाइब्रिडिटी की स्टेज पे फंस जाता है ही इज नीदर इंग्लिश नीदर ही इज इंडियन सो ही नीदर रिमेन्स इंग्लिश ही नीदर रिमेन्स इंडियन वो बीच में फंस जाता है एंड दैट इज वॉट द यू नो द आउट इफेक्ट ऑफ मिमिक्री इज ऑल अबाउट then we have another important post colonial theorist named gayatri spiva she has written a work called can the subaltern speak subaltern means people jo society ke ek aise part mein rehte hain jinka kabhi bhi society mein koi say nahi hai for example people living in dharavi slum in mumbai वो लोग ने ना कभी कोई लिटरेचर लिखा है ना पढ़ा है ना उनका सोसाइटी में कोई भी से है ना वो किसी पॉलिटिकल डिस्कशंस में पार्ट लेते हैं नाउ देर आर सर्टेन राइटर्स जो धारावी के लोगों के बारे में लिखते हैं गायत्री स्पीवाग से सच राइटर्स आर नॉट डूइंग जस्टिस टू द पीपल हु आर लिविंग इन सब ऑल्टर्न एरियाज बिकॉज वो जब उन लोगों के बारे में लिखते हैं दे आर नॉट एबल टू रिप्रेजेंट दैम इन अ फुल सेंस इन अ कंप्लीट ट्रूथफुल सेंस दे मिस रिप्रेजेंट दैम कि जब भी कोई धारावी में रह नहीं रहा वो कैसे धारावी वालों के बारे में लिख सकता है ही डज नो द चैलेंजेस द काइंड ऑफ लाइफ स्टाइल दे आर फेसिंग एक दूर से ऑब्जर्व करना और एक वहां जाके रहने में बहुत फर्क है सो गायत्री स्पीवाग से कहीं ना कहीं जब सब ऑल्टर्न को कोई और लोग रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं अपने लिटरेरी वर्क में तो दे मिस रिप्रेजेंट दैम एंड द सेम केस शी टॉक्स अबाउट इन द केस ऑफ फीमेल्स शी सेज दैट जो फीमेल्स हैं जो कोलोनाइज कंट्रीज की फीमेल्स हैं वो डबल तरीके से परेशान है एक पेट्रोल सिस्टम की वजह से दे आर बीन रिप्रेस एंड नंबर टू कोलोनाइजेशन की वजह से दे आर रिप्रेस दे आर अफेक्टेड ट्वाइस due to the societal conditions so this is it about post colonial literature there are so many other post colonial theories you can get a list on my website uh, get a list of all the post colonial theories make your own notes and study the works in detail there are so many other literary theories like marxism which talks about the class conflicts and how bourgeoisie are influencing the working class people then we have another literary theory called reader response theory which talks about how the background and experiences of a reader affects the when the reader is reading the text then we have cultural studies which talks about how the culture around the author influences author's writing we have queer theory and there are so many other theories uh, which are a part of the uh, literary theory module uh, so let's end this video on this note that uh, all the literary theories are very important uh, because of two three reasons one of them is that it helps us in understanding and analyzing a text in a very different way from a diff very different lens number 2 it adds beauty to the text and it adds new meaning to the text some meaning which was not there in the text when the writer wrote it but then that meaning is uh, put in by us so this is how a literary theory helps in analyzing and critiquing literature so with that i end the video we'll meet next week till that uh, bye bye see you and keep loving literature before you go do subscribe to this channel and follow me on instagram facebook whatsapp and telegram so that you're notified every time i have a new update for ugc net english you can also give me a call on the number display and you can uh, have ask questions and doubts about ugc net if you have any questions any doubt you can even write that in the comment section below uh, if you like this video then do give it a thumbs up and share it with other net aspirants so till the time we meet next bye bye happy learning and keep loving literature